So the death toll in the last influenza pandemic was half a million. They were mainly previously healthy, working-aged adults. So an infectious disease outbreak like that is really frightening, but it comes with a huge economic cost as well. It's estimated that the cost of the next influenza pandemic will be $330 billion. And there will be another influenza pandemic. We don't know when, and we don't know what strain of virus it will be. The best response today would be a strain-matched vaccine, but using the current technology, that will take too long. Meanwhile, people will die. So I want to suggest a complementary approach to try to stop the pandemic in the first place. The source of all influenza is in wild birds. The avian virus can pass from them into farmed animals, pigs and chickens. Those farmed animals are stepping stones for the virus to jump into humans. People can catch bird flu, but if the virus mutates and becomes airborne transmissible, the next pandemic is born. So here's what I'm suggesting. If we could stop the flu from going into farmed animals, then we would prevent the next pandemic at source. So we're envisioning a barrier or a buffer. That would be farmed animals that can't be infected by influenza viruses because they are resistant. So we know that we've bred farmed animals for improved traits for decades, like improving meat yield. But so far, nobody has really known how to generate animals to be resistant to pathogens. Today, though, we're in the middle of a revolution in genetic editing. That is CRISPR technology. So CRISPR technology is a way to precisely alter the genome of a species to introduce beneficial new traits. But we realized that we could use CRISPR technology to generate farmed animals that can't be infected by influenza viruses. But which gene should we edit? Viruses like influenza cause disease by replicating inside the cells of their hosts. They steal host-encoded proteins and they use them for their own purpose. Four years ago, during our fundamental research at Imperial College London, we discovered the identity of one of those host proteins. It's a protein that all influenza viruses are utterly dependent on. So we predict that if an animal doesn't make that protein or if it makes a specifically altered version of it, then it won't get infected at all by influenza viruses. And they can't pass on to us what they don't have. So to generate these resistant animals, we could take the whole protein away but the protein is there in the animal to perform a function, which may be important for the health of the animal. And we know that the virus only uses a very small part of the protein for its own purpose. So we only need to change that one small part. So the good news is that we've already identified the smallest change in that protein that we can introduce that stops the virus in its tracks. Using CRISPR technology, we could precisely engineer that one tiny change into the genome of the farmed animal, and the rest of the animal stays exactly the same, retaining all the benefits that have been bred into it for years from the point of view of the farmer. So to achieve this, we've teamed up with the Roslyn Institute in Scotland. They are the people who created Dolly the sheep, the world's first cloned animal. So at the Roslyn, they do a lot of research in farmed animals and genetics of farmed animals. And they've already worked out how to apply CRISPR technology in pigs. For example, they've generated gene-edited pigs that can't be infected by a pig virus. They've also worked out how to use CRISPR in chickens. And we hope that later this year, our first gene-edited chicks will be hatched. And we will challenge them with a flu virus to show that they really are resistant. So our idea to generate farmed animals that can't be infected at all by influenza viruses is aimed at improving global health security because we're aiming to stop new pandemics from emerging. But it also brings animal welfare benefits because the animals themselves don't get sick anymore or need to be culled when there's an outbreak. And food security because chicken is a major and growing source of protein to feed the world. The main barrier to implementing this idea is public acceptance. People eat food from farmed animals that have been altered by decades of traditional breeding, but they might be nervous about eating gene-edited food. What we need is clear communications and responsible regulations to reassure the public about this new technology, that it is innovative, safe, and can be used, for example, to tackle these kinds of problems for the world like infectious disease outbreaks. So that's the challenge now for all of us. Thank you.